Okay, let's also turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Only one book, bless God, only one book, Amen. above all other books, and that's the King James Bible. It is above all other books. Amen. And guess what? The King James Bible shows you really salient verses, and sometimes you understand this. When God shows you a certain verse, sometimes He will show it one time. And when you take out an important, and I'm going to look at important doctrines, that's only found at one verse. Good advice, don't change it, right? Yeah. I would give you very good advice, don't you dare change it then, because that's the only verse you're going to find in the entire Bible that mentions a specific doctrine. And we're going to look at those verses, which shows why you can't trust these modern Bibles, but the King James Bible. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. What does the Bible says? What's the first word in that verse? Study. All right. All the modern Bibles, and I believe the New King James Version as well, go be diligent, or they replace the word study with something else. That's your only verse in the Bible that teaches you what to do with the Bible. The command to study the Bible. Not just God commanding you to study, but God commanding you to study the Bible. The only command. And they got rid of that word study. Instead they just, uh, what do they say? Like be diligent or something like that. No, it's not just being diligent. It's actually studying it, all right? Looking at the verses, reading it, memorizing, knowing all the doctrine. You've got to actually take time to study. Not just be diligent with it. What, with reading? With memorizing? With other stuff? No, God wants you to study that thing. He wants you to be so thorough with it. But it's twofold. It's the only verse, only verse, and if you're a KJV onlyist, my goodness, you have no choice. You have to change this verse, but you can't because you claim to be KJV only and you don't like dispensationalism. Rightly dividing. The only verse in your Bible that commands you how to, stu how to study the Bible. It's a method of rightly dividing the word. Amen. Majority of modern versions, they will change rightly dividing to hand handling, rightly handling. Your only verse on dispensationalism. Your only verse to find Bible-believing truth. Could, well, kind of makes sense why NIV people, NKJV people, uh, you know, James Big Fat White Lie and Dan Walnuts and those guys, it, now it makes sense why they don't know much Bible-believing truth. Yeah. Because they got rid of a verse that, the only verse in the Bible where to find Bible-believing truth. You have to study, and you have to rightly divide it. And guess what? You IFB churches, even if you're King James only, you're guilty of both. You only go to devotional topics. You won't study deep. And you, won't, you won't dare go to the Genesis gap. You won't dare talk about the strange stuff about the deeps in the outer space. You won't go that far. And you don't even, invent, you don't even get into dispensationalism. And that's why you can't blame heretics for stealing your sheep because you failed to feed them. All right, that's 2 Timothy 2.15. I think that's reason enough, and we can finish this video. This is really important, don't you think, this one? Amen. Now let's t look at a second verse. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.23. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. This is the most important verse that gets you change your spiritual life. I preached a sermon out of this. I think almost two sermons. This one is such a... I use this verse quite often. Abstain from all evil or appearances of evil. Appearances of evil, right? Verse 22. Uh, 22, thank you, brother. 22. See, pastors make mistakes. See, you all have to pay attention, you know? Otherwise, you would go, amen, amen, like that. And it's appearance, not appearance. Appearance, thank you. Okay, then. All right, you don't have to be that critical now, okay? Now stop, all right? I'm just kidding. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 22, it says abstain from all what? Appearance of evil. This verse is the only verse in your entire Bible that tells you not only avoid sin, but what appears to be sinful. Mm -hmm. See, that's why some people, they might say, oh, you're too legalistic, you're too careful. But no, it's because we, want, we don't want to appear sinful at all. So that's why some of us, we don't do some stuff in our homes for convenient or pleasured things. Because it appears evil. That's why we wouldn't dress a certain way or watch a certain thing or listen a certain thing because it what? Appears evil. How does your testimony look to the eyes of the world? See that? 
You know, nowadays, people can tell between a Jehovah Witness and a, a regular, you know, atheist by just looking how they appear rather than a Bible-believing Christian. It's so sad. They see a Bible-believing Christian where they see a Calvary Chapel guy and an atheist, and they, don't, they can't tell the difference at all. Mm -hmm. So that's why appearance of evil. But guess what? Modern Bibles, I guess they don't like that. No wonder they're so worldly. That makes sense now. That you can't tell when you're in a you're in a service, you're either in a rock concert or you're either in a worship service. You can't tell the difference now. Because why? The Bible says form of evil. Not appearance. But form or kind. Now, don't you think this is an extremely important verse that changes your whole life? It's life changing. Even the New King James Version messed this verse up. All right, let's look at another verse right here. We're going to look at uh, Mark 9.29. Mark 9.29. Mark 9.29. Oh, I'm sorry. There is no Mark 29, okay? There is none. I'm so sorry. In your NIV, in your ESV. Got him. Look at Mark chapter 9, and we will read verse 29. The only verse that teaches you what to do against demonic attacks. And I'm surprised how many... Oh, that's not important. Yeah, it's important. Do you know how many comments and emails I get of people who are under demonic attacks? And they requested help? You know what? You know what? This is so important. I use this. Mark 9, 29. And he said unto them, this kind, this particular demon, because it's so strong, can come forth by nothing but by what? Prayer and fasting. You have to fast and pray. Now, Matthew 17, 21 is the same thing, repeating the same thing. Oh, oh, but we have it. We have it in Matthew 17, 21. No, you remove fasting. Oh, you can pray all you want, but if you want to get really desperate, this is so powerful. Fasting and prayer is so powerful, folks. I can't stress that enough. Especially, it's not just flesh, but even demonic attacks. This is so important. They remove fasting. The only verse, only verse against demonic attacks. Could that probably explain why some of these modern translators could be so demonically oppressed or possessed? Maybe, maybe that would make more sense. Huh. All right. Let's look at First Timothy chapter six, verse twenty. First Timothy, chapter six, and verse twenty. Your only verse in the entire Bible, and a lot of you conspiracy buffs will love this verse, actually. <laughs> Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. And you know my position on flat earth, so please don't stress on that one, all right? But you will love this anyway, okay? 1 Timothy 6, 20 is your only verse in the entire Bible that shows you this. It warns you of... It doesn't warn you about science. Science is true. All right? Otherwise, you and I would not exist or even enjoy your little iPhones or the Internet that you're watching if you don't know science. But it's warning about science. It's not warning about science. It's warning about what? Science falsely so-called. Your only verse in the entire Bible. Only verse. Only verse that warns about false science. Great verse against evolution. Amen. Great verse against all these scientists. And, you know, even Einstein, I thought he's the smartest guy, but recently he was even disproven on his uh, re uh, relativity concerning the speed of light. Recently. That's impossible. But it actually became possible. By the way, Dr. Upman wrote a critique against that years ago. Ooh. Well, anyway, <laughs> modern Bibles... <coughs> Replace that with knowledge. Okay. Knowledge falsely so-called? Wait, that doesn't make sense. It's not uh, knowledge falsely so-called because there is knowledge out there, but it's a knowledge that can teach you evil things. See that? So it's not like false knowledge. You think atheists are uh, atheist professors, your liberal university professors, are dumb people, or do they have knowledge? They have knowledge. See that? So it's not like false, it's knowledge. But the thing is this, even though they have knowledge, that knowledge, they can use it wrongly, where it guides them down to a wrong path, and eventually even false knowledge as well. See? 
Okay, let's look at another verse. 1 John 5, 7. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. Oops, I'm sorry, there is no such verse. But it's verse 7. It's, chapter 5's got more than 7 verses. Yeah, in your NIV, your ESV. Your only verse, your only verse in the entire Bible, where it says, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. Three Amen. in one. That translates to Trinity. I don't know if you knew that. So if you're scared of that word, I'm sorry, 1 John 5, 7 actually shows that word. Trinity is Latin for three in one. But I'm not going to get into that. Point is, is that Trinity, your only verse, only verse that shows Spirit, Jesus Christ, and the Father together as one. Only verse. And that's been removed in your modern Bibles. Yeah, you can prove Holy Spirit's God, Jesus is God, the Father is God. You can do that kind of stuff. But how are you going to prove something where it says those three are one? I mean, it's such an important verse. Strong, one of the strongest verses on the deity and the trinity. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 23, verse 33. So I'm quoting this from memory, 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy uh, Ghost, and these three are one. So it's something like that. But that verse has been removed. All right, Luke chapter 23, verse 33. Thank God for Calvary, amen? Yes, There's so sir. many hymns and songs that sing about Calvary. But guess what? You can't sing about Calvary if you have the modern Bibles. You got an NIV, ESV, you type down Calvary, it would say, there's no such word. No. Sorry about that. Zero searches. <laughs> Look at Luke chapter 23 and verse 33. I've heard, I've heard that the New King James didn't have that before, so maybe it's in their older editions. But the New King James, currently it does have it. But a lot of other modern Bibles, they don't have it. You know what they replace this word with? Oh my goodness, imagine singing this song. Luke chapter 23, verse 33. And when they were come to the place, which is called the skull. You want to sing that song? Thank God for the skull, thank God for the skull. No, I don't like, I don't like the skull and bones, all right? That kind of sounds like that to me, all right? I don't want to get into that. All right, let's look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Most famous verse, right? We all know this verse. But guess what? Have you ever thought about this? The only time did ever... You know, how can you warn people about Lucifer if he's Amen. hidden? Mm -hmm. Your only verse, your only verse in the Bible that says Lucifer. Mm -hmm. But you have to replace that with Jesus? What is Jesus' title? Day star, morning star, and they replace that. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O who? Lucifer. Lucifer. Could there be, when you hide this, that Satan has a hidden agenda behind these kind of Bibles so that his conspiracy, his working, can be hidden? And you don't see that. 